Good morning, guys. Welcome to Fishful Thinker In Depth. I'm Chad Lachance, and I appreciate you joining us. On today's episode, we're going to look back at Harvey Gap, which is part of the Rifle Gap State Park here in Colorado. It's a western slope fishery, and we're chasing largemouth bass. And there's not a lot of largemouth bass opportunities in western slope. A lot of people had asked us for that, and so we decided to go over to Harvey Gap. And we went with our friend Connor Foy, who guides over there but he doesn't necessarily guide for largemouth. We wanted to go run around and see what we could catch on Harvey Gap. So stay tuned guys, get comfortable. This ought to be a fun show. There he is right there. All right, now I would say pike, but I haven't seen it. And it's oh, a largemouth, so I'm glad nice I didn't say mouth. pike. <laughs> I'll get you the net. I already got caught on that one once. <laughs> And they are, I, I am surprised guys to be largemouth in this water temperature wanting that bait going that slow. And it looks like I'm working it fast, but I'm putting a distinct pause in the middle of about one second each time. And these West Slope largemouth, which is really what we wanted to come over here to show you because we get so many requests for West Slope largemouth. And that's a good looking largemouth right there, people. Yeah, buddy. I mean, look at how shiny that thing is. And that's the Berkeley Cutter 110. We've been throwing you that, I've been showing you that, I should say, I've been fishing that thing since before they uh, were launched to the public. That and there's is another a beauty, man. Beautiful, chunky little Colorado largemouth. We'll put him back right here. We'll put him next to the to the jerkbait, nice and gentle. Look at look how clear the water is, guys. You can see that jerkbait just hanging there in the water column. This is the Berkeley Cutter 90 jerkbait. I believe this is the actual one we were throwing that day. Same color, it's blue over chrome. Again, very, very shiny. And the point of both of those baits is to generate flash or strobe effect. It's what picks up that sun and acts like a mirror, like a signal mirror, and allows predator fish to find your bait in the same way that a bait fish turns in the water column and picks up a little bit of sun. And that's so, so important because if I fish just a bright color, then the fish get a really good look at the bait when they come and look at it. But by having a mirror strobe like that, I get that flash to get fish to look, but it actually reflects its surroundings whenever it's not moving quickly. So that's a really excellent way to get all kinds of predator species to bite when it's glass calm and bright and sunny out like that. Fish. Nice. All right, just pop that jerk bait on the pause too. <laughs> Uh, what happened? Oh, I have ballyhooed something. I think it's a bass, though. I think I, yeah, I think that bass is like, what just happened to me? <laughs> we found our target species. Uh, yeah, that's large a, mouth too. The large mouth on the chrome cutter, and he didn't like that at all. The bait was actually paused out, and I saw the line jump, and then I went. I was like, oh, no way, and then I pulled on it again, and he was on there. So. Uh, he ain't much of a largemouth, but uh, truthfully, we don't catch very many largemouth on the western slope of Colorado. This is the Cutter 90. I could have thrown a 110. Uh, in fact, I think I threw a 110 a little bit that day, uh, which is a longer version. Of course, those are millimeters, so 90 and 110 millimeters. Very, very shiny. Back then, I threw them on slightly different tackle. Here's what I throw it on now. This one's fresh out of the rod locker, so it's still got a lure wrap on it. It's a six foot eight, medium power, extra fast action Abu Garcia Veracity rod. It's a very, very strong blank. It's a very strong blank. Real crisp action on it for getting real, real precise movements out of my jerk bait and, uh, and plenty of power to land whatever you're going to catch. I pair it with the Revo Rocket, again, for the high speed on the reel so I can get tight on fish in a hurry, get my bait back in a hurry. As time goes on, I'm, I'm developing more and more and more of a preference for faster and faster reels. So uh, this is the fastest spinning reel they make, and that's why it's on here right now. When they make a faster one, I'll buy it. 15 pound X9 braided line right here. Stuff is smooth as silk, casts like great, holds knots fantastic. And of course the standard short fluorocarbon leader. I've got a knot right here. It's about 18 inches to two feet long, uh, 12 pound trying 100% fluorocarbon leader. So my standard jerk bait setup, it doesn't matter if I'm fishing for snook or whatever. The only thing that ever changes is the leaders on this particular rod right here. That rod would have been a great choice for us on Harvey Gap that particular day. The bait was suspended. I stopped the bait. There was this subtlest little tick like is what is common with pike. I would have bet you a hundred dollars that was a big pike or, or, or pike, you know, the way the bite felt. You want me to net him, Chad? Uh, yeah, just because we got the jerk bait, we'll. Uh, Let's do I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to deal with him. Oh, it's a good looking largey. Yeah. Putting on a show, he's pretty. Yeah, and I'll go easy on him. He's got two hooks that I saw. It looks like he's down to one. Mm -hmm. 
Fishbowl Thinker is brought to you by Lowrance. Find, navigate, dominate. Sportsman's Warehouse. Gear up for unforgettable. Yeah, and I'll go easy on him. He's got two hooks that I saw. It looks like he's down to one. Yeah, next time you bring yep, him up, next time I'm he comes him. up. There you go. He, whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, I don't want to get these. He didn't like your net. There we go. Just hold him tight right there. Hold it tight. Hold it tight. Hold it tight. Look got at that. No it. hooks in the net either. We like that. <laughs> and there you go, guys. There's another beautiful largemouth. Another Western beautiful. Western Slope, Colorado largemouth. People say here, there man. aren't here, but there's one right there. And they're healthy. Yeah, we'll put that one back right here. Look at that. Well, without question, the most key catches on that show though were the big largemouth that I found and we were really targeting big ones and we couldn't find them and I kept mentioning the inlet and we finally went over to check out the inlet and on our way in the inlet what caught my attention more than the inlet itself was the only willow bushes I saw anywhere on that lake that had any water depth on them were right around the inlet and there was two willow bushes in the inlet not even as big as the front deck of my ranger boat here little willow bushes and I recognize that scenario right away. I have an isolated willow bush. There's no possible way. It's right on the edge of a channel. There's no way there's not gonna be a bass in that willow bush. So I got out the flipping stick. This, these days, this is what my flipping stick's gonna be. This, this rod is right here. It's a seven foot three. It's a heavy power, fast action. It'll throw up to an ounce and a half bait. In that particular case, I was throwing a half ounce Texas rig with a 4 out Fusion 19 hook, and I went back and forth between a Pit Boss and a Creature Hoss, so either a Powerbait Pit Boss or a Maxent Creature Hog. Those two things I threw back and forth on that Texas rig with a 4 out Fusion 19 hook. Um, the, again, we're back to the Veracity Rod for the strength and power. It's a very, very strong blank. It deals with those hook sets, those big monster hook sets, which I dearly love very, very well. It's got 20 pound, trying 100% fluorocarbon on here, same as that day, and the Revo, uh, Abu Garcia Revo ALF reel on it. It's an eight to one gear ratio, of real fast reel, very lightweight, pairs nicely with this rod. This is what I'm gonna do all my pitching with. Uh, these days is this rod. I have two of them in the boat at all times. One of them set up with 20 pound flora, one of them set up with 50 pound braid. Depending on what I'm doing, one of those two, the more vegetation there is, the more chance I'm going for the braid. There was just two little willow bushes, so I chose the fluorocarbon and it paid. Fish, got him. Come out of there. Yeah, buddy. Come out of there. You got me in that stick. Come out of there. All right, there's a good large that mouth. That's a great large and mouth. And that's why you go up in the inlet, guys. Hang on, hang on, hang on. No hurry, I got him on the goat rope, bud. He'll stay. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> that's insane. Inlets, outlets, bow ramps, and dams. <laughs> oh, buddy. That is the one after. <laughs> and I want to point out there's a four up Fusion 19 hook right there, guys. You ain't never coming off. When you got them on the 20 pound, 100% floor and that hook right there, you got them, dude. Right in the top of the mouth. And there it is. That's the Maxent uh, Creature Hog right yep. there, the Powerbait Maxent Creature Hog. Just Texas rigged. And Texas rigged, and you can see those willows right there, guys. I pitched all the way to the bank inside those willows right there. And that's a quality largemouth that is right a there, but boo yeah. A key lesson from that particular those particular willow bushes is is a there's going to be more than one fish in them, almost guaranteed, because that is the most prime spot on the lake for a big largemouth to sit. From anything we saw anywhere else, and we did make an entire lap of the lake over the course of the day. If you find a spot like that, you need to make it pay because let's say I go through there and I jerk a fish or two out of there. But if I come back a half an hour later or 15 minutes later, there's gonna be another one in there because whatever one size smaller fish wasn't able to get in there because he was being pushed out by the larger fish, he's gonna move in there. The larger fish that you catch may return right in there assuming you're good at catch and release and we wish you were if you're not. Um, you know, you put that, that three, four, five pounder back and he swims right back in that same bush. He's named for the size of his mouth, not his brain. He's gonna go right back where he came from and you can probably catch him again an hour later if you really want to. So it's a tiny little spot again, not even as big as the deck of the boat, but before it was over with, we caught four fish out of those two little bushes and another one that I, that I lost. So that's a lot of production in two little bushes and it goes to show you it's worth taking the time to rig for that one spot and make sure that you make that spot, you know, you mine it for all it's worth. If I had 100 spots like that, I wouldn't worry about it, but I had one, so I made it work. The harder the better. Yeah, yeah, you gotta hit them, for real. That's why you got the big rod, the big line and everything. You saw the wrestling match that turned into getting that one out of there. Yeah, you pulled them through that stuff. Fish, got him. 
There he oh, is. another oh. nice one. I knew it. I knew I just missed one a minute ago. All right, you tell me when. I'm coming up in the boat. How about Wing that? <laughs> there we go. We don't need a net for that one. It ain't got teeth. So that's two in that pile, guys. We were talking about that inlet hook in the same spot. And there's another little chunk. That's a nice looking fish. And I fish. just told camera guy Tim after we went past here, I'm like, I've got two other bites in there that I know of that I missed. And there's another one of them right there, guys. So Western Slope Largemouth are represented. Yeah. I'm going to kiss that one for sure. They are nice. represented, man. <laughs> and my little Maxent Creature Hog. Hey, easy. Sorry, buddy. Paying the bills. <laughs> so there you have it. Our day on Harvey Gap with Connor Foy. Connor's one of our favorite guys to fish with. Uh, check him out, apexsportfishing.com. You know, if you're a Western Slope guy or you want to just try some Western Slope fisheries, we've done some good largemouth bass damage at Highline and Crawford and, uh, you know, Harvey Gap here and Elkhead as well. So you've got some options on the Western Slope for largemouth if you'd like it. It was fun to finally go show folks some of the largemouth from the Western Slope. Um, I think that was a really good thing. You know, the lessons, when it gets high, bright sun and glass calm, fish fast, fish shiny, you know, find isolated cover, make that stuff pay. So we appreciate you guys watching. If you want to join the conversation on social media, that's at Fish Will Think across all platforms, including YouTube, where we have almost 300 videos up there. Go check those out, watch them all, and please subscribe. Otherwise, we hope you'll tune in, and we'll see you next week. Got him. Oh, I missed him. Buddy. Come on now. That is in the grass right there. That, that might have been up. a fish, actually. No, that one was in the grass, yeah. No, I'm right. off. Got him. Oh, oh buddy. Oh. He got it. Nope, I missed him. Okay, he's in there. Hang on. Give me a second.